Good morning, Lincoln Center. Well, I'm stuck behind this mail truck. It's a ma mail as the postage. Not, I'm not sure if it's a male or a female truck. I can't quite see if it has balls. Anyway, something very cool happened. A motovlogger in Portland, Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Oregon? A motovlogger in Portland, Oregon. By the name of Moreland Moss. Moreland Moss. Made a video of him with his helmet on in his kitchen cooking a porchetta from the porchetta recipe video that I did. And he was very enthusiastic because he's a vegetarian. But he went out and got all the stuff and made a porchetta for his neighbors, just for the enjoyment of cooking for his neighbors. And that was really cool. And he had a lot of nice things to say about, you know, my channel and stuff, and I appreciate that. So thank you, Moreland Moss. I will definitely be trying to get up some good stuff for you. I'm, I'm motivated now for content. I'll put up a link to the video. Here, here, here. It's cold. It's getting cold. It's getting downright chilly. So what do you like to eat when it's chilly? Chili. Uh, like how I tied that together? Oh, chili's cool. Uh, for the colder months, when you get home, you have a nice hearty, hearty bowl of chili. Now my chili's pretty basic. It's not, uh, it's not something that I get too uh, extravagant with. It's kind of something I want quick and uh, I want to eat it. This is not a competition grade chili, a blue ribbon chili. Um, this is not the secret recipe chili. This is just pretty much just bang it together and uh, make chili. So here you go. You're gonna need a half a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of ground pork. I like to put a little pork in my. If you don't, just put beef. No one's gonna get mad at you. Need one whole Spanish onion, diced into little pieces. You also need about four cloves of garlic, sliced into thin pieces. Also gonna need some pancetta. Italian bacon for those that don't know and you're gonna want to chop that up into kind of one inch pieces one inch square pieces you're gonna need a whole can of tomatoes the larger can like a 24 25 ounce can of whole plum tomatoes and you're gonna want to blend them I don't like getting canned tomato sauce because it kind of has a metallic taste to it. I find that if you get the whole tomatoes and then blend them yourself and make a puree, uh, it's, a, it's a much better result. So one can of tomatoes. Spice-wise, you need about a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of ground cumin, and then I would say like a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. but you know, you can always put more in if you want it hotter. You can't take it out. I have overdone it several times, as I, I'm prone to do. I'm prone to overspice things and <laughs> make things a little too hot for the rest of the family. You'll need salt and pepper, and then you'll need some uh, some beans. I like to get like a can of like pinto beans or a can of the red kidney beans and then a can of white beans just for you know texture color cannellini beans just the canned beans is fine and you'll need one bottle of beer whatever beer you're drinking uh, i find the dark beer works better not to endorse any uh, one beer maker or another i'm not being paid but uh, one of the founding fathers does make a lovely oktoberfest that i tend to drink around this time of the year. 
You're gonna need a pot and you're gonna need a strainer, like a spaghetti strainer, a colander. Just get your pot, kind of warm. Get your meat out. Throw it in the pot. Then you get a wooden spoon and kind of, you know, push it around. Don't move it too much, but, you know, break it up. You wanna break it up into the smaller pieces so you don't have the big chunks. You know, you don't want a meatball in there. And then put in your cumin, chili powder, and cayenne. Mix it around. And then when the meat's about 75% of the way cooked, get your colander. And you can put it in the sink or put it in a bowl that's big enough to hold the colander. And take all the meat and dump it in to the colander. And this is going to drain out a lot of the grease and the fat that would have risen to the top of your chili had you not done this. You're giving everybody heartburn the next day or evening. You don't have to get all of the grease out, you know but you want to get the majority of it out. You don't have to wash the pan or anything. So you get your meat in the colander and it's draining. Put the pot back on the heat and throw in your diced pancetta. You want to let that pancetta render out. So you can probably turn the heat down to low. Let the pancetta render out its fat and flavor, goodness. And go until it's cooked and it's kind of, the fat's starting to get clear. It's not quite crispy. You know, but it's starting to, you know, get a little golden brown. You don't want it too overcooked. And then when the pancetta is done, throw your onions in there. Stir them up real good. And let the onions cook until they're tender and kind of translucent in that pancetta fat, bacon fat, pretty much. Once the onions are soft, push them all to one side and then put in your garlic on the other side. And just a little bit of, just a little bit of olive oil on top of your garlic just to kind of help conduct the heat. And you want to cook your garlic until it just starts to go golden. Just starts to go golden, but not too much. And then when it starts to change a little color and start to turn, you know, golden brown, then stir it all back together and mix all that stuff up. Okay, good, next. Dump in your bottle of beer, the whole thing. You can take a sip if you want. I tend to do that myself sometimes. And reduce your beer by over half, like three quarters. So your pancetta's rendered, your garlic's in there, your onion's in there, your beer's in there, it's reduced. Dump your meat in there. Dump your can of tomatoes that you pureed. Take the beans, now that the colander's free of the meat, take your beans, open those up, put those in the colander, rinse them off. Some people like to use the juices from the beans, but that's, I don't know, it's not my thing. Get all the water out, put those in there, stir that up, bring it to a boil, and then once it's bubbling, bring it down to a low simmer. You want to simmer and stir, stir in every few minutes, you know, get a book, sit down next to the stove, watch your chili. Uh, it's not a super long recipe. I'll, I'll let it simmer for about an hour. And the meat's pretty much cooked, and everything's cooked. You're just trying to let all those flavors kind of come together, you know. And then, after about an hour, and you can put a little bit of uh, water, too, in there. So, like, take the can of tomatoes and rinse the sides and fill the can up about halfway and put a little water in there just so it doesn't reduce too much. And then, this is what I like to go for salt and pepper and add any spice that I think it's missing. Uh, I like to salt at the end. If you salt the beginning and then it's like, oh, it needs more, it needs more, and you put more in, and then it needs more, and it put, you put more in, you end up reducing the sauce and then all of a sudden it's super salty because now it's reduced and the flavors are all concentrated. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. You can finish it off with whatever you like. Some people do the sour cream and cheddar. I like to take a handful of saltine crackers and then just smash them in my hand, throw them on top. But that's it. Meat and motorcycles. Chili edition. <laughs>